It was built in 1815 by my great, great, great grandfather, James O'Conquer, the 17th Lord Forbes, on the site of a former house, which was called Putiki, which basically had to be pulled down uh, because cracks appeared in, in the foundations when they were exposed. Although the original idea was to add on to the existing house. But Castle Ford really was built from scratch in 1815. So it's not very old by Scottish standards, um, but it does require a good deal of maintenance constantly. It's got quite a bit of flat roof, which always causes problems in the winter, particularly if we get a lot of snow. Um, Ginny and I have done quite a bit of um, refurbishing and redecorating and adding bathrooms and that sort of thing. And uh, four years ago, I installed a biomass boiler um, using wood pellets in the home farm near my office, which um, heats my office and a couple of cottages in the home farm. And we took a pipe across to the castle itself and linked it up to the heating system. And it's made an enormous difference, particularly in the winter. Malcolm, could you speak to the claymore and the bare stone over the fireplace? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the claymore belonged to Black Arthur Forbes, who was the younger son of the ninth Lord Forbes. Um, and he was very instrumental in dealing with the, the trouble we had with the Gordons at that time. And uh, there's a, probably a fair bit of Gordon blood on that, um, on that sword. Um, <clears throat> they eventually got him, though, in, the, in 1582 at the Battle of, of Tilly Angus which is quite near Arford, quite near Castle Forbes itself. When he stooped down to have a drink at a burn, a stream, um, in the middle of the battle, and a Gordon came up behind him and <coughs> struck him a blow through his armour um, in his back, which was not very, not, not what we call cricket. However, that was the end of him. Um, the bare stone, the stone underneath it, was found apparently on the, the hill um, of Brooks, which used to be part of the estate. It's now no longer part of the estate, um, about 10 miles away, and was built into the back wall of the old house. <clears throat> and when castle, the castle was built, it was put into where it is now, above the fireplace in the hall. And it goes back about three feet as a sort of cylinder. And if you look at it very closely, you can see that somebody's had a go at carving something. And if you use a lot of imagination, you could possibly say it looks like a bear's head, but um, it, it's a rather difficult one. I've got a theory that it may have been actually an upright standing stone from a, a stone circle of which there are quite a lot in this part of the country, but um, who knows? It's a bit of a mystery, but it's a talking point. <laughs> um, and th this is the round room in the tower um, next to the, the hall. And um, I think may have been built as a music room because it's got a, um, a domed ceiling and has a very big, particular echo and Ginny has her piano in there. <clears throat> now this is the picture um, in the room that I'm sitting in at the moment of um, the girl on the right is Catherine, sorry, is Marjorie Winram and she was the niece, the, the the niece of the gentleman on the left. And he brought her up because her parents had died when she was young. But the point is really that she married somebody called Sir Robert Innes of Orton, which is on the Spey, which is the ne next door river really to us. 
Uh, their daughter, um, Catherine, married my great, 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 great grandfather, James, who was the 16th Lord Forbes. And it's quite an interesting picture <clears throat> because um, it uh, goes off to exhibitions occasionally. It has got a proper frame, but the room that I'm sitting in is actually what used to be part of the old dining room and had a high ceiling. And that picture used to hang on a, another wall in the same room, but with its frame. But <clears throat> when um, the room was altered to make it a bit more comfortable for my grandmother, when she was here on her own for 20 years after my grandfather died, uh, the picture was um, just fitted in there, but there wasn't room for its frame. Unfortunately, <clears throat> this is the tapestry that hangs just below the stairs at Castle Forbes and is thought to have been worked on partly anyway by Mary, Queen of Scots, because it was given to an ancestor who was a lady in waiting by Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, it's a uh, the three panels of a valance that would go around the edge of a bed. And again, it goes off to exhibitions occasionally because it's very, very fine, detailed needlework. You can't really see it um, until you get up fairly close to it. Now, this is a couple of shots that Bart did, I think, of the sort of cupola over the main staircase, which um, is fairly modern, or at least the glass bit on top is fairly right. modern. It was about 10 years ago in the middle of a snowstorm in the middle of winter, the old one just flipped off. And so we came down to breakfast in the morning to find the, the pile of snow on the floor and um, the, the roof wide open. However, <clears throat> the, this one hopefully will last a few more years. <laughs> now, how many portraits do you have and how many are of uh, previous Lord Sports? Oh, golly, Mark, that's a difficult one. I don't know how many there are altogether, not that many, probably a couple of dozen. Um, but I think we've got portraits of them all. Now, I've just got my father's one <clears throat> here as well, but we I haven't got my grandfather's, but we've certainly got um, three or four before him, <clears throat> and some of them with their wives as well. <laughs> this is the... Cash. The main Excuse one me, is someone, the uh, someone is speaking. Could you turn off your microphones so that we can hear Lord Forbes? Please turn your um, mute on. Thank you. I'm sorry, Markham. Yeah, this is just one of the, the bedrooms. I think that the one on the left is the tower bedroom. And um, the one on the... Yeah, the one on the right, I think, is, is the room next door to it. It's a sort of twin room with a bathroom next door. What we tried to do is <clears throat> convert, a lot of the bedrooms had dressing rooms next door to them, um, but no sort of washing facilities. So we've turned quite a lot of the dressing rooms into bathrooms, um, which is, is an ongoing um, <clears throat> thing, but we've done the main ones now. So you don't have to go down to the end of the passage anymore <laughs> to have a bath. Now, these are the rooms that you have used for the bed and breakfast portion of exactly, your Exactly, yeah. Could yes. you speak to what your plans are? We spoke a little bit about that uh, before the gathering began. Yeah, well, we're very much hoping to resurrect that operation next year. Um, we haven't been able to do it, obviously, for, well, not at all last year. And uh, this year, really, things opened up too late to um, make it worthwhile gearing up for this season. Um, but we're very much hoping to <clears throat> do it next year. I know Ginny's very keen to do it, but as I told Bart earlier, 
neither of us are getting any younger, but we do love doing it um, as much as we possibly can. And we'll certainly do it whenever we can for um, members of the clan, particularly. I and recall that, I'm sorry, I, I recall that Ginny was much more excited about uh, uh, clan Forbes than she was about, quote, German backpackers staying over. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very true. <laughs> How would somebody go about asking for uh, the opportunity to stay at Castle Forbes? Well, we've got a, there's a Castle Forbes website, and I think it has a, an inquiry form on it, or, or just email email us. I, I believe it's uh, info at Castle Forbes or. Uh, there's office at Castle office at Forbes is, is the best one. Office at castle Forbes dot com. Yeah. Yep. That's all it takes is an email. Yep. And here's the outside courtyard. Um, this is from taken from the back with all the dustbins. <laughs> um, and in the courtyard. There used to be the old kitchen and all the servants' halls and that sort of thing, uh, which we effectively knocked down because they'd been shut off since my grandfather died in the early 50s. <clears throat> and there was only a very small area that was open as a courtyard. But when we knocked the old kitchen down, um, it made a very nice big courtyard and as you see um, Ginny's planted a sort of round flower bed in the middle with herbs and that sort of thing in it um, and it's quite a nice little sun trap um, in the summer and we and this is the old um, dairy building which um, hadn't been used for many many years um, but we converted it initially into a, a, the smallest perfumery in the world, I think we called it, when we opened our perfumery business, um, which quickly outgrew that building, which has no electricity or running water or anything like that. But um, it did feature in a film that was shown last Christmas called, I think I, it had two titles, but I think one of them was Christmas at the Castle, which was rather a a cheesy film that some of you may have seen um, about um, a girl from America coming over to find a scent for her mother and falling in love with the, the laird's son and all that sort of thing. Anyway, it, it made a good yarn, I think. <laughs> I, I they captured did, the they clip. Filmed the actual bit of the perfumery in our, in our old perfumery because they wanted an old perfumery that hadn't been used for some years. So we still have a bit of equipment in it and some bottles and things. <clears throat> and that's, um, yeah, that's our range um, of um, men's, it has evolved into really a, an upmarket range of men's shaving products based on a very high quality shaving cream and associated aftershaves and Loads of bar firms for for men. Now we did do things for ladies and soaps and um, potpourries and all that sort of thing when we started, but we just find that we found a little niche, particularly with the shaving cream. Um, so we we've majored on that, and then we we just go for that now. Um, unfortunately, an awful lot of people. Um, seem to have given up shaving nowadays and <laughs> so we're trying to we're hoping that things will change and people will go back to the traditional way of shaving sooner or later and your newest release i know what your newest release 1445 1445 is um our sort of flagship one now it's um, I think a, a very nice one I used and we called it 14 5, 1445 because the the first Lord Forbes we know was created sometime round about then we know it 
he was Lord Forbes by 1445. Exactly when it was created is not known, but so we called it 1445. It just seemed like a good number. <laughs> and as you can see, we don't use parabens or or any products that have been tested on animals or any of that sort of thing. It's all pure, natural, essential oils. Awesome. A lot of your job is managing the estate. And I was privileged to actually visit you in your office with this whole map of the entire estate. Could you explain yeah. how much of the estate has been maintained over the last few uh, decades? Yeah, well, that's quite interesting. The, the, this is of this estate, the Castle Forbes estate. In my grandfather's day, there were a couple of other smaller estates which weren't linked to Castle Forbes, which he had to sell one before and one just after the war um, to pay death duties, essentially. But that map was done in 1828, I think it was. And the estate here is essentially almost exactly the same as it was in those days in terms of the, the outline boundaries. Obviously, some of the bits that are shown as forestry on that map are now agricultural fields and, and vice versa to an extent. But I've got that map, as you know, hanging in my little office which is about 100 yards from the castle. I think it's remarkable that you've been able to maintain the estate when so many lairds have been losing their lands as a result of taxes. Yes, well, I think um, we, we were lucky in many... Hmm? Uh, I think someone doesn't have their mute on. Go ahead. Yeah, no, we, we were lucky, as I was saying, in um, many ways. I think we had some good advice at the right moment as to how to <laughs> mitigate the death duty problems. Um, but it is a constant problem, and it, it's, it's getting more and more difficult as time goes on, because obviously they tighten up the rules, and it's more and more difficult to find ways around them. So one's constantly thinking of how best to try and preserve it as one unit because it, it certainly works as one unit and it is needed um, to help support the, the castle basically. Another operation you have on site? Yes that's um, <clears throat> something I started about 15 years ago was um, woodland burials. It, it's not something that's for everybody uh, by any means, but um, a lot of people I think are going in that direction. It's a more eco-friendly way of disposing of yourself, I suppose, <laughs> when the time comes. Um, so I cut off a little bit of a, a, a field near the wood, near the stone circles, I planted some trees which now are really becoming mature and I'm, I'm very pleased with the way it's going and it, it looks just as I wanted it to look. It doesn't look like a graveyard at all, you, you wouldn't think it was a, a graveyard at all until you <clears throat> get up very close because we do allow people to put small flat stones um, to mark where the ancestors or the relatives are buried um, but otherwise <clears throat> there's no sign of any there are no big upstanding stones or anything with left sort of letters in gold or anything like that and i encourage people to plant um, <clears throat> particularly spring bulbs sort of daffodils crocuses and snowdrops and that sort of thing so it, it actually looks very good particularly in the spring when the leaves are coming onto the trees and and the flowers are at their best. But as I say, it's not something that's for everybody by any means, but it does <clears throat> have a lovely view of the Hill of Benahi, which is Aberdeenshire's sort of um, signature hill. 
um, and the, a little bit of the western end of that is part of the estate. And a lot of people have a feel of great affinity to the Hill of Benahi, and therefore that they get a, a nice view of it, so to speak, um, when they're gone. And what are your plans for the estate in the next decade or so? Um, well, Bart, just really to try and keep it going uh, as it is, as I think you know, the main the main um, enterprise on the estate is farming. Um, and I did a fairly major restructuring of that business um, about 20 years ago. It had been all based on uh, dead production of milk. Um, but when I did the sums, I discovered that we were actually losing a penny or two for every litre of milk that we produced. Um, so I did away uh, almost overnight with all the, the livestock on the estate. And I simply do the cropping now with um, contractors. And I let out the grassland to local farmers um, on a seasonal basis. So they never become tenants. We've effectively got all the farmland in hand now, which is important for um, future generations, particularly now, because there's a, the Scottish Parliament are going absolutely mad on giving tenants the absolute right to buy their land and all that sort of thing. So anybody with tenants on their land um, run the risk of the tenant coming along and saying, I want to buy the land that I farm. I know, so, yes, sorry. Sir. I know Jordy's only 10 or 11, uh, but Jordy, the master of Forbes, is your heir. Uh, how will you be engaging him over the years? Well, I think very gently, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> at things like the, the Highland Games, you know, the Lonach Gathering and that sort of thing. I mean, he is at school in the south of England at the moment and is likely to be there until he's 18. But um, his mother and um, sister come up and they've got a little cottage just up the hill from here. And um, he, he touched wood at the moment, seems very keen on the whole thing. And I hope that that will continue and I will do everything I can to foster his interest in the the clan. He was absolutely thrilled to be asked to do the foreword for the, the House of Forbes for kids book. And in fact, as I was telling Bart earlier, he, he signed one for me um, under the bit that he'd written. And then he put in brackets, he calls himself Little Chief. It's a good ring to it. Now, <laughs> are you going to do to Jordy what your father did to you and just hand over the keys and go to London? <laughs> well, no, he didn't do that to me exactly. <laughs> no, no, I, I will, uh, I will have to play it by ear. But I certainly won't. Um, I won't suddenly thrust it all on him. I was rather told when my grandmother died that the castle was mine. What was I going to do with it? Because my father was very comfortable in his nice modern house on the edge of the estate and had no intention of moving into the castle, which at that time anyway, was in a fairly rundown state. But no, I won't do that to Geordie. I'll, uh, I'll let him, <laughs> I'll see how he goes. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Now we're open for questions. If you click on your uh, chat function at the bottom of the screen, then you can type in a question or you can just wave your hand. I don't see everybody all at one time at the scroll up and down. Uh, but if you type in your question, I'll call on you, or if you could just wave your hand. I'll start off with the board. Jim, do you have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw Lori twiddle her fingers. Lori. <laughs> yes. Unmute. Yep. Okay. I had to find the unmute button. Um, we're being joined today with my husband, Bart. Right. Yeah. So have... your husband, we... Bart. Yeah, his yes. name is Bart. Yes. Right here. That's right. What a, that's a great name. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a question. After we were there in 
in Scotland in 2019, I started do, doing some reading about the little ruins of the church. And I read that there used to be a, like a tile baptismal in it and that it was moved into the courtyard of Forbes Castle. Are you, was I just reading a, somebody's tale or is that true? No, you're absolutely right. We, we, we oh. have it here because as you saw when you were here, um, the churchyard is in a pretty dire state at the moment. Yeah. Um, the council are responsible for keeping it up and they did for a bit and then they, they suddenly seem to lose interest and abandon it. Um, so we, we rescued the, the baptismal font and it, as you say, it, it is in the courtyard here. Oh, that's great. Because my, uh, my ancestor was the preacher in that church. He's Reverend John uh, Forbes. He's buried in that courtyard. In the churchyard? Yeah, in the churchyard, yeah. All oh, right, All right. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think, I looked at my pictures and I don't, don't have a picture of it. So I don't know if we saw it or not. I've, I've got a little book which um, does list and mark roughly the spot of the graves of the people in there. I, I'll oh, look that up. I'll oh look that'd that be up. great. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah he, was, I, he was John Forbes. Yes, he died in 1634. Not to be confused with his nephew, John, because he was a preacher too. This was a son of William who built Course Castle. Got it. Yeah, I believe wow. I sent you my family tree. But anyway. uh, Steve Forbes, I see that you have your hand raised. You have a question for our chief. Un unmute, please, Steve. We can't hear you. The lower left hand of your screen. Oh, no. okay. There you Thank go. You. Thank you. Um, we just we wanted to mention the fact that we met, visited uh, Malcolm and Jenny in September of uh, year 2000 and had a wonderful visit with, in the castle, an overnight in the upper room, and I think is that round room that you showed in your video, Malcolm. So we just enjoyed dinner and breakfast and uh, hope to get back sometime. Mm -hmm. I so, hope thank so. You. That's great. Anyone else want to raise their hand or have a question in the chat section? Yes, Jim. Unmute, please, Jim. Yep, just clicking the button. Yeah. It, it, you, you, Bart knows the backstory on this. Uh, I've been fascinated with the uh, Claymore sword in Castle Forbes for some time. And he, he took the, my question away from me, but uh, glad to hear who it's from and how old it is and, and your comments. Uh, a far bit of Gordon blood on the, on the tip <laughs> of it was rather amusing. So thank you, sir. But my uh, final question is, uh, what is your favorite Scotch beverage? Oh, uh, the Macallum. What year? <laughs> <laughs> as old as possible. <laughs> very uh, very, very uh, well. I'm very fond of Speyside malts and particularly Macallum. Splendid. Thank you. <laughs> Good to know. All he served me was famous grouse. I'm afraid, yes, that's that's the royal basic. <laughs> I've got some much better ones for you next time, Bart. <laughs> yes, I see another hand up with Joan. Hi, Joan. Hi, Bart. Will we be staying in the Forbes Castle B and B in next year's Forbes trip? Is that to me or to Bart? E either one. Bart probably knows more. I don't know. Yeah. I think that basically the answer is no because our bedroom space is fairly limited. Ah, okay. Um, and I think that the numbers um, and I, I have. I think it's all organised to go to. Um, a local hotel, isn't it, Bart? Yes, we have uh, about two or three hotels that can handle the entire tour. Um, unless, Malcolm, you want to turn the kids' room into a barracks. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I don't think your um, participants of your tour would probably um, like uh, that, sort of, uh, the, that sort of accommodation. No, we like to keep the accommodation upmarket, and we've only got a fairly limited number of 
of rooms that have bathrooms, en suite, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. As, as a castle goes, it's a, it's a very big, comfortable home. <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, I believe it's only the first two levels that you have maintained. Is that for heating purposes? That's right. Mm -hmm. Re really, the, the, the top, everything above the first uh, floor has, is just a big attic now. And you have lots of stuff up there. Sorry? And we have, you have lots of artifacts up there we can take a look at? Um, well, you know, the first thing I did in the, the first lockdown last year was to clear all the junk out of those upstairs rooms. And there were piles of, you wouldn't believe it, old carpets and God knows what. And so they're, they're, it's all empty now. Mm. And uh, it's much more comfortable because it's not a not a haven for mice and bats and God knows what. <laughs> yeah. So, Joan, I don't think you want to stay up there. No. <laughs> However, um, Lord and Lady Forbes will be hosting an event at the castle for us. Uh, that's the plan at this point. We haven't quite determined the details. Isn't that correct, Malcolm? That's absolutely right. Yes, yeah. so I'm. I'm waiting to hear exactly what what you'd like us to do but i think you're going to dramina before you come here aren't you dramina of course being the original castle forbes unless uh, we lose some in the dungeon of dramina um yeah. but that's and, the plan uh, to have a tea or a lunch or something on the lawn hopefully if the weather is is nice hopefully the weather will be nice yes yeah, yeah. And it rather depends how long Alex delays you at Dramina because he, <laughs> he he knows far more about the Forbes family than I do. Yes. And he, he's a fount of information, as you know. As I well know, we spent about three hours chatting with him. Um, so that was a delight. Uh, is there anyone else who has a question? I was going to ask, G oh, Jim, you already had, Leslie, do you have any questions for Malcolm? No? Uh, Bart, it's yeah, Heather. I, no, just I uh, Heather and then Peter. So Heather, why don't you go first? Yes, I was wanting to inquire with uh, Lord Forbes whether they still raise the road deer on the estate. Sorry? The road, the deer. There was these small deer that used to have on the estate. I know when I was there and I had dinner <laughs> with you. Yes. We had the, those, oh, dear. I think they were called roe. Road deer, yeah, that's right. They're, I mean, they're, they're all over the estate, and we have to manage them because they do a lot of damage to particularly yeah. young trees and crops. Right. Um, so my brother really looks after that side of the estate. And, uh, yeah, we do have to um, so, deal with quite a number of row every year. They're a bit like Quite your, delicious, I must tell you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're good to eat. I know. <laughs> I never had, had one until I was there. So Since was... you were here in the last few years, we've also had um, a, a problem with uh, red deer, with the big stags coming in, oh. and they, they cause even more damage. So we're, we're having a program now to deal with oh. them as well. Yeah. It's been 30 years there, so... Um... I remember every minute of it, but it was fascinating, all the history and the, the opportunity really was for me, it was a lifetime opportunity. So I'm, and at that time you still were doing, I think the bed and breakfast on a selective basis only. So as I say, it's been a long time. <laughs> I'm due yeah, for another- well, very kind of you to say so. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Heather. Peter, you had a question? Hi, Malcolm. Just to make sure to tell Jenny I'm having a plasma <laughs> in your honor. But you can't afford $200. Uh, doing fine. You know, we're here in Washington, D.C. solving the world's problems. So uh, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> but when are you going to see us again? Oh, I, I, yeah, there's just been such a travel. I think as soon as I can get a plane. My, my, my ultimate goal is uh, when Trump uh, barfs up uh, Turnberry in a bankruptcy, we'll, we'll get together with Michael Forbes and uh, go, go play around at golf. <laughs> but, um, um, a a uh, slightly superficial question, but then a, a, a little more serious. 
I, I was I have some friends that went crazy over Outlander. And um, so I watched a, a few seasons. I don't know, are you familiar with this? I'm not, Peter, no. no. I mean, I not, the name rings a bell, but I didn't see the... It's just like a man... Series on television. Yeah, an HBO series. And in the first season, they go through, you know, the Battle of Cologne. Anyway, throughout the whole thing, there's no mention of any Forbes. And I was just wondering whether the author has just got some bone to pick. Maybe she's a secret Gordon. <laughs> Actually, there was a Forbes character briefly who was not a good guy. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I sort of lost interest in the show. Just but my more serious question is just farming, you know, climate change, you know, government, you know, how are they forcing you to do stuff? Your thoughts? I mean, because you're right on the edge, you know, with North Sea and yeah. Wind farms and I mean it's a it's a crazy mess. Yeah, and any it's thoughts? It's a changing scene, and as you say, it is a it's a mess in Scotland at the moment with the current um, Scottish government, sadly, who have really no idea at all about how to or what goes on in the countryside. That's fairly clear. But I, but I guess having having restructured the financial arrangement, that you actually have sort of less risk. Of the, it's yes. just if crops don't do well, then you know you haven't sunk your life in. That, that was the idea. We we know where we are now, and we're not sort of um, we're not likely to make you know huge losses one year, which was the case when we were doing milk. <clears throat> now right. it, it's more stable, and I I do sleep much better at night. Good. <laughs> one quick question. Um, I know she represents Highlands and Islands, but do you know Kate Forbes? Kate Forbes? Yes, the member of Scottish oh, Parliament. Who's, um, who's our, uh, the Scottish Chancellor of the Exchequer. Correct. No, I don't know her. Could you Sorry. please? What? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you got to know her better. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't think her politics and mine would That's true. quite match. <laughs> no, thank you for that. Uh, Maggie, no, I, I, think call, I call her cousin. I call Very her good. cousin Kate. Cousin Kate. Okay, <laughs> Maggie, go ahead. Now that the attic is completely clear of debris, do you have any ghosts moving in? So, sorry, now that the what's completely clear? Well, you said the attic had been cleared oh, of attic. carpets and yeah. so forth. So yeah. there was a great big open space, and I was wondering yeah. if, if you have any ghosts. Well, you never know. I haven't seen one personally, but um, I'm, sure you, you, I'm sure you could magic up a few, Maggie. <laughs> That's yeah. not normally what I write, but when I was on no, the but... tour, lots of the castles boasted about their ghosts. Yeah, well, we're, we're not really old enough, but I'm sure we, we ought to have one. Yeah. So if you could, if you could. Maybe when the would tour you, arrives. Would you like me to make up one for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of our guests will mysteriously disappear. You read my mind. <laughs> Anyone else has a question for our chief? I. If I don't see your hand, uh, just speak up. I don't see everyone on video. I, I just assume that on the uh, Codnamer Hill on the website, there's sort of instructions about how one might plan for that, Put, putting one's ashes there. I'm sorry, Peter, I didn't get that. Is, is that is, is on the you know guide to the, you know, the burial, forest burial. I assume that yeah. there's instructions on the site of logistics and Oh yeah, that's all, all on the, the Castle Forbes website. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Another question about the estate, Malcolm. Uh, do you do offer stocking and fishing? Uh, fishing we do, yes. But not stocking? Uh, not so much stalking, no. Um, we, we tend to manage that ourselves. Mm. So that would be an, another reason to get uh, full people to uh, Castle Forbes. I did notice that you were mentioned on some fishing sites that I've researched. I encourage yes. people to contact you for fishing. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Atlantic salmon are in sort of major decline at the moment. And the fishing has been very poor in the last few years. 
Well, in my research, I found out that the Lord's Forbes have been battling for the rights to the salmon and mostly in battling Aberdeen. Yes, yes, I remember seeing that one. Yeah. Are there any other questions for our plan chief before we go to uh, the tour and the DNA project? Yes, Jim. Uh, Bart, there is a question in the uh, chat section. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed our, it. Uh, members. I, I, I put my I Outlander thing in there. I can't yeah, it, see it. It, it says, uh, is there an official Forbes tiara and has Lady Forbes ever worn the tiara? Uh, the, the answer to that basically is no. Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> because, well, it, I think that there was one on my mother's side. Ah. of the family. I, I don't think that there was, there was never a, an official Forbes one. And Peter, if you have any more Outlander questions, feel free to ask me. I am I am well versed in it, the program. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> was Great. I right, Leslie? Wasn't there a minor Forbes character at one point, one episode? Yeah, when they come to the United States, there's a Forbes in Virginia, I think. Right. Not a nice man. Yeah, he was like a lawyer or something, wasn't he? Of yeah, course. I think so. Yeah. I think so. yeah. Nasty lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> remember, most, uh, many of the episodes about Culloden were at Culloden, which is also a Forbes heritage site as well. Well, right. Of course, they never mentioned right. that. Yeah. Yeah. My first tour, I had the honor of, um, we had a tour guide who was a historian. It was it was crazy. It was an Outlander tour, but she knew so much about the history. Um, and I was just finding out about my Forbes connection at that point. Mm -hmm. And I had very mixed emotions when we got to Culloden and knew that it had been owned by a Forbes, but that there were Forbes on both sides of that conflict. So, but my ancestor had come to the US far far before that so <laughs> <laughs> if there are no other questions I, I don't see more questions in the chat Jim do you see anything there okay uh let's go on now so, so Malcolm Lord Forbes thank you so much for your presentation for taking our questions